Hi, I'm Dr. Rich Blon, host of the Sex Act podcast. Welcome to this, the fifth episode of the podcast. In this podcast, I'll continue our discussion of acceptance and commitment therapy by focusing on what are called common thinking traps. In his book, The Happiness Trap, Dr. Russ Harris describes common thinking traps that people often buy into. Uh, your mind is capable of cranking out an endless stream of unhelpful thoughts that get you hooked or trapped, as Russ would say, on self-talk, uh, and a lot of that self-talk can really undermine your sexuality. Unhelpful thinking traps are based on myths related to cultural norms about sex, outdated information that you have about sexuality, and common misperceptions that you have. Uh, they're also linked to unhelpful relational frames from your past. And while you can't stop your mind from creating these thinking traps, you can learn new ways to behave in relation to them. In other words, although you can't set, stop your mind from creating or eliminating them, you can control how you behave in relation to them once you've fallen into one of these traps. With practice, you can also begin to recognize these traps more quickly and avoid falling into them once your mind uh, springs them on you. I'll go over a couple of my favorite thinking traps so you'll get a sense of what they're about and how they might relate to your sexuality. The thoughts are reality trap is one of my favorites, and this trap is based on the myth that your thoughts about something actually represent the objective reality about it. In actuality, your thoughts about something are just that, your thoughts about it. Your mind often distorts your thoughts through embellishment, interpretation, or judgment. And whatever you're thinking about at any given moment is actually your version of it or your mind's version of it as it passes through the filter of your brain and all of your brain's accumulated relational frames related to that subject. Nowhere is this more evident than in your thinking about sexual events from the past. Your thoughts about your first sexual experience are a perfect example of this. Uh, your thoughts about this experience recapture the way your mind perceives and reviews it. What you would to describe what you would describe to another person as that event is actually your recall of that first sexual experience. And your recall is always subject to admission or embellishment. Uh, you commonly leave out bits of information or exaggerate others as you remember something from the past, particularly a sexual event. Now you fall into the thoughts or reality trap when you actually believe that your thoughts about something are the same as the actual event experienced in real time. Another common thinking trap that I really like is the I can figure it all out in my head trap. And this trap is based on the belief that you don't need to directly experience something in order to understand it because you can figure it out in your head just by thinking about it. And when you fall into this type of thinking trap, uh, you can spend hours ruminating about a situation, trying to figure out how you might control all of the troubling aspects related to it or how all of these troubling aspects might work out. So you just spend hours and hours and hours trying to figure all this out in your head. Unfortunately, what happens is your mind has the ability, the ability rather, to generate an endless stream of thoughts and emotions related to you're trying to figure it all out. Instead of eliminating your pain and suffering related to the situation, your mind generates even more troubling thoughts and painful emotions <clears throat> by constantly ruminating about it. Now, this gives you additional issues to think about and try and control or eliminate. You'll never be able to figure everything out, all the, all the aspects of a troubling situation out in your head. The best way to manage a troubling situation is to accept that you can't figure it out in your head, coexist with that anxiety and that pain, and then take steps to directly experience the situation and not try and figure it out in your head. Now you fall into the I can figure it out in my head trap when you believe that you can control your pain and suffering by trying to figure everything out in your head instead of accepting the way your mind works and take action. In my book, Sex Act, Unleash the Power of Your Sexual Mind with Acceptance and Commitment Therapy, I use an example of a former student of mine, Lourdes, and that's not her real name, uh, to illustrate this trap. 
Lourdes was a 21-year-old senior taking my human sexuality class, and she was engaged to Mark, also not his real name, uh, another student in the class. And one day after class, uh, we had been discussing sexual behavior, and we were talking about anal sex at, and during that class. Lourdes came to my office and um, wanted to talk to me uh, about her thoughts and desires and fantasies about anal sex. And she confided in me that that's something she's always been interested in, and uh, yet none of her previous boyfriends had wanted to experiment. And she's really in love with Mark, and they were engaged, and she wanted to explore this with him, but she didn't really know how to bring the subject up to him. And she was experiencing a lot of, experiencing a lot of anxiety and, and stress about, you know, how am I going to bring this up to him? Um, she was worried because she thought in her mind Mark had this picture of her as a little angel, you know, this perfect uh, Madonna kind of figure, and, and um, she was worried that his perception of her might change if she shared her fantasies and desires about, you know, some forbidden fruit sexual topic like anal sex. So the way she was dealing with this was trying like running constantly all the possible scenarios about how this might work out if she brought it up to Mark and trying to like figure everything out in her head without sitting down and really talking to him. So I explained to her that she was really increasing her anxiety and her stress by trying to figure this all out in advance. I told her it would be more productive uh, to think about how to, to bring up the subject and when and where. So we talked about that and we kind of set up a situation where she would get him alone and, and put some time aside to talk about this. And she said she'd give it a try. Uh, and I kind of lost touch with her for a couple of months until graduation. And she comes up to me and she said that uh, everything was great with Mark and that uh, they were getting married in the fall according to plan and that their sex life had improved tremendously after she had spoken to her about her desire to explore uh, anal sex with him. And she laughed because it seemed that Mark was thinking about the same thing. And he had always been curious about it, and uh, he knew that in their foreplay they kind of got around to that area and then, you know, didn't really talk about it. Um, but he had been worried about bringing it up to her because he was worried about how she would perceive him if he brought up the subject. So it turned out that both of them uh, were trying to work all of this out in their heads in advance without actually sitting down and talking to each other and bringing the subject up, you know, directly experiencing what would happen. So it turned out that they, they both uh, were happy with their decision, had incorporated it into their lovemaking activities, and you know things were going really, really good. So uh, it's just an illustration of how you really can't figure everything out and how things will work out just by thinking it through. You've got to really uh, accept that anxiety associated with trying something new, even if it's just talking about something, and then going ahead and, and doing it. So you can read more about this in my book, and I look forward to working with you again next month. Bye-bye.